Hi, this is Teresa Sahi, and welcome to our webinar. It's the celebration of International Women's Day. And so I together, myself and two of my colleagues, which I'll introduce to you here in just a moment, wanted to come together and talk about what International Women's Day means, what it's meant in our history, what's going on out in the world, and what it really means to each of us women here together as colleagues and as women here joining our webinar and connecting with us here. So first, let me introduce who is here with me today. Now, as you can see, both of the women here have beautiful red glasses on. So the first woman I'll introduce is the one with the dark hair. <laughs> it's Candy Elisala. Candy is a family caregiver, coach, and empowerment coach for Empowerment Advocate. Candy is passionate about helping bring hope and wholehearted living to people going through cancer and their family caregivers. Candy herself is a four-time cancer thriver and former family caregiver. She is a multiple best-selling author, inspirational speaker, and mom to three kids, one angel dog and one diva cat. So welcome, Tandy. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. And the other beautiful woman here with us in the red blouse, but with the blonde hair, is Claudette <laughs> Chenevere. Claudette works with stepmoms struggling to create a cohesive family. As a certified master step family coach, she provides education, support, and tools to enable enabling stepmoms to achieve their goals within a specific time frame, often surpassing expectations. She helps stepmoms find what works best in their situation so they'll be able to create the kind of family they truly want. So welcome, Claudette. Hi, everyone. Hi, ladies. <laughs> So again, I am Teresa Sali, a certified women's success coach, a law of attraction trainer, mom, wife, and community builder for great women. So I decided to make a difference in the world by becoming an empowerment advocate for women, by helping them to overcome overwhelm, struggle, and uncertainty by embracing their inner feminine power, creating a new life plan, and get clear, confident, and committed onto what they really want. So yay, so that's, thank you guys for being here and let's get started. So, so yeah, so this is International Women's Day celebration and it's about looking at the history, where we're going collectively, where we've been individually and what it really means to us to gather together and to have this discussion and what we can take from it going forward. So as it turns out that this um, organization, and you can look up more about the organization of International Women's Day. Um, they have a website of just that name. And it actually began like way back in the 1900s. Who really knew it was going on way back then? But certainly it's been through a history of different things throughout the entire world. So it's a global celebration. And it's recognizing the achievements of women in social environment, financial environment, and their service in the world and in their service in their homes. So it's really about just recognizing that and going forward. So I, I invite you to look at their website and learn more and more about that organization and how you can get involved in your own communities. So this year's theme for that organization is where I can start it off in our conversation, but it certainly isn't the only focus of our conversation. We wanted to just have an open discussion on what it's kind of meant to in our own life and what we've come across as maybe challenges or successes and how we dealt with any of our own struggles. So, um, oh, I'm sorry, I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> what was I gonna say? We're gonna talk about gender parity. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 thank you. So yeah, so that is the theme. I'm so sorry, the theme for, and they have um, hashtag press for progress and it's about gender parity. And so I would like to defer to one of my colleagues here if they wanted to explain for those of that aren't familiar with that term, what that actually means and then we can go into how it has impacted our own life. Well, I have here opened up the definition of gender parity because um, it was, something that I, I hadn't heard before, but I was very curious. And so according to um, Wikipedia, which is a place to often go for a definition, it says here it's the index in socioeconomic index 
usually designed to measure the relative access to, uh, to education of males and females. And so it, it often, it's often used to see how men and women um, equate to one another, whether there's more men versus women, whether it's in education, in certain uh, work areas, in um, economy, financially. So it's really to try to uh, bridge the gap between inequality between men and women. Absolutely. You know, I, I also wanted to say that there was um, on their website about this topic, they actually listed 10 values that I think that are really important just to say it out loud. And then, who, you know, us and who's listening here with us can maybe take that in and some that they can like recognize in themselves or even want to strengthen in themselves. Mm -hmm. so let me just say a few real quick. Um, justice, dignity, hope, equality, collaboration, tenacity, appreciation, respect, empathy, and forgiveness. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, you know, thank you for sharing more about the definition, Claudette. You know, and, and my own experience with, and, and not using the parody term either, I wasn't always familiar with that term in this way, but my own experience in my own career and my own life, um, I think when I really recognized that I was maybe getting disconnected from society in some way is in my corporate career where I was feeling a gap and it was the gap that I didn't feel I could be who I was. I was working in a corporate environment and very, very masculine environment. And, and so I was feeling that pressure of society that I had to always show up having all the answers and doing more and more and trying to be this superwoman and trying to figure it all out. And when it comes to having discussions at work and I had to not follow my intuition, but have all the answers and have it proven and have all the statistics and be able to explain it all, boom, 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 rather than here's an idea that I feel would be awesome. That wasn't necessarily accepted, which was who I was and my, you know, I, I loved following that intuition and playing it forward and kind of like collaborating together to get to the final answer. And so many times it wasn't taken as acceptable. Um, so I would leave the meetings, go back to my office, close the door, and then kind of fall apart a little bit there. I certainly couldn't be emotional in the workplace, right? So that's, you know, looked at as weakness and I don't even mean to fall apart. I mean, you know, just have that emotional like feeling. You couldn't really show that. You had to just be tough, tough skinned and like just take it like a man, <laughs> so, so to speak, and go back. So that's when I first noticed in my own self that there was something, a gap there. And then one thing led to another and noticing and studying that. And I think the universe has a way of bringing things to you when you're seeking answers. And what was brought to me was to look into that gender differences and how we're made up and, and things like that. And it actually led me to what I do now, which is not working in corporate environments, to be a supporter of women and to embrace the inner strength and feminine power, which is different. It's not right or wrong or better or anything like that then, but it's different and how we can embrace it in a different way. And so that's why I wanted to kind of show up and have this discussion even more with you ladies. What about you, Tandy? Oh, I love that example, Teresa. And as someone, a fellow corporate escapee <laughs> myself, um, before I do did what I did do now, um, I worked 25 years in corporate America in executive leadership roles in higher education administration. I was an adjunct faculty member for 10 years, um, teaching human resource management, strategic planning, leadership, problem solving and was a Franklin Covey facilitator in the, the variety of their content areas for four years. So I very much was in a masculine environment. And I felt like you did a lot of times, Teresa. And but the one experience that I'd like to share that might seem a little interesting 
um, that happened to me was um, as a result of an organizational structure, my boss had uh, was moving on and and um, so I started reporting to a different person, um, and I won't say who or what because people that might be watching this, if if I do, they'll know because they know the structure of the organiz you know of the organization. But um, I was pretty high up, and um, he my my boss uh, new boss was looking at our budgets and all that stuff and and uh, called me one day and said, "Hey, Tandy, we." Um, I'm not going to increase your, I'm going to slow your bonus structure growth because all the other people that report to me, which coincidentally were all male, um, are all making less than you. And my very first instinct was, yay for me! Like, I make, I'm actually like, wow, you know, my previous boss who was also a male, you know, was supportive of me and was doing that. You know what I mean? Like, I really felt there for a hot second. I was, like, feeling really proud that, that, um, that I did have some pay equity, you know, there, which, is, which can be um, an issue for, of, you know, contention. And then that thought immediately was, excuse me? <laughs> You want to slow my bonus and my pay, my increase, because your other direct reports aren't making as much as I am. Hmm. So I proceeded to own my power and shine my light, and I immediately expressed to him um, my disappointment with that um, my, and, uh, and with his leadership. And I let him know how valuable I was to the organization and specific to your point, Teresa, about specific concretes, backing it up. I had, you know, all of that. And I, in, in that conversation, I said, you know, I have saved the company over $3 million this year. I, you know, have decreased operating costs. I have increased um, student engagement and retention. I have increased employee engagement and retention by this amount. My department is the employer of choice for this organization. You know, and I went on and on about 10 things, 10 solid statistical <laughs> ways that I and my leadership and my department, my, to your point, collaborative efforts mm -hmm. of everyone on my teams was doing for the organization. And why would he punish me for doing a fabulous job? I mean, I don't want to sound cocky, but but it was very um, it was very unsettling. And in that, the end result was he he backed off. Um, and I think he ended up just bumping everybody else's paid to what I was making. Um, but we all know that are watching this, that if I was a male, if I was a male, and that there were the, the other, all the other direct reports were female, making more than I was, wait, yeah, my boss would not be calling me and saying, you know what, Tandy, I have evaluated your budget and your everything and your, and your contributions to this organization, and um, I've, I'm going to increase, I'm going to bump up your pay 30%. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. That just wouldn't happen. Right. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so I really believe it was a gender issue. Mm -hmm. And um, that experience really started me on the path of getting out of corporate America. Yeah, interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You remind me, you, you remind me of a similar story, but almost the opposite. Um, the same company that I was referring to before, when I was hired into that company, I was hired into it um, by a male, was, you know, who I reported to. And I was hired at a certain level. And within the first year of my working there, um, the leadership who I reported to changed and it turns to where it was a woman that I reported to. 
and unbeknownst to me, mm -hmm. um, come, you know, um, pay raise time, right? The, the yearly review time. She says to me, Teresa, she gave me um, quite a substantial, substantial increase out of the norm. And it was because all of my colleagues were making so much more. And I was in shock because I felt like when I was hard there, like it was like, rah, rah, you have so much experience, much more than so many of my, um, the, the team here already have I don't mean, many thousands of dollars a year less. So, but it was because at that point I was now going to report to a woman. And so I feel like she kind of got that. So interesting how these kind of play out to us in our, you know, our corporate careers too. Yeah, absolutely. Claudette, how about you? So uh, for myself, I, I didn't, where there was a lot of um, difference in the work I did or in the field I was, is between men and women specifically. I mean, if you've gone to get a haircut, you definitely know that this guy will go and get a haircut and he'll pay like, I don't know, like $15, $20 for a haircut. But you go to this same place because you're a woman. And if you happen to have hair a little longer, it's going to cost you so much more. So, so just, just to start that, and let's not talk about dry cleaning and all of this because then that'll get me really yes. frustrated. <laughs> so anyway, so, so I worked as a hairstylist for many years and that was really great. I worked for Paul Mitchell. I was a trainer for them. I created some programs for uh, other hairstylists in, in the salon. So I was really up there. And um, so I was working in the salon with m one of my colleagues, and uh, we did some great work, and he went away on vacation. And we know, like, people will tip us, and, you know, to, we tip uh, hairdressers. So while he was away, we would divide his clients among the people that were there. And so, which happened to be, we were all three women with this one guy. And he wasn't the owner, so he was just an employee, just like the rest of us. So, while he was away, we would do their hair, and the women said, oh, I love it, you do such a, a, a better job than so-and-so. I mean, we, you really do a great job. I said, well, thank you. And so, they would tip us. But we noticed, and we sort of knew how many, how much people would tip one another. We noticed that we actually got half, half the tip they were giving him. And so we're like, are you kidding? We're doing a better job than he was, but we're getting half? And so one of my colleagues said, hey, I noticed that you're giving us half the tip. And she was very forward. And, and so she says, yeah, but you're not a guy. And we're looking, oh seriously? Because, because, and this is, what, in the 90s? And it was like, really? And so it really got me to think, like, you know, why is it that for women, we need to be less appreciated, less that even though the work is either equal or better, and we have these men who are doing the same job as us, but maybe not as efficient or as, as good, and they're being, being rewarded. So as, you know, when um, I have two stepdaughters, and so I made sure that when my girls went to school, that they valued themselves and were able to express themselves. because. You know, these are just things. It happens in corporate America. It happens in places like when we go to a restaurant. Restaurants are another big place because a guy waiter will dress up. He'll get a bigger tip 
than a woman who's probably feeding three kids at home and is a single mom, but she's not getting as much. And so I think it's a lot to do with how we view women's role as opposed to men's role. And, and, and so I'm glad we're having this discussion. So I'm getting to share you know, yeah. some of my personal experience. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for that, Claudette. Thank both of you. You know, it's true. It kind of opened up the questions. Like, you know, we we can probably go on and on about when we start looking back at different situations. But maybe to be really um, going forward, you know, to take our experiences, to take what's been happening, but to to really recognize like what has happened to us, but how to move move it forward. Well, you know what what is what is happening out there is slowly changing and and so it's not about you know a blame type thing things happen for a reason things are the way they are but you know and, and you even kind of alluded to it too claudette that it's the questions why but it was also the support of the other women that what was also affecting you and so I see that that, you know, it's, and I just see it as we, we show up doing what we've learned to do would have become like the norm, but then the norm is kind of getting stretched and pushed and, and it's, you know, it's, that's why this conversation is happening. That's why there's been this um, Women's International Day going on for almost a hundred years. It's because the norm doesn't feel quite right. So what do you think is really happening um, even to our younger generations, or what can we do to help them so we don't carry on a habitual way of being just because that's all they've learned? Because it's kind of like, you know, if we don't talk about it and share that it doesn't have to be that way, and it's not really has to be a fight and they're doing something wrong, it's maybe about how we could show up differently. Yeah, I'll, I'll take a stab um, at that. And then, and then Claudette, um, I know you've got some some uh, awesome input. I think it comes down to, and this is going to sound really simple, okay, and we can break it down in different ways mm -hmm. um, depending on how the conversation goes, but I think it comes down to how we raise our children. And I think it comes down to worthiness, deservability, which ultimately is self-love. And how much, how are we, I guess, training and educating our children to love themselves and to accept themselves as they are and to know that they're beautiful with all their imperfections? You know, there's so many obstacles or, or mistakes that I see even smart women making, um, you know, putting, we put Here's a big thing. We put, especially as women, we put other people's needs ahead of our own. Mm. And when we do that, we are doing a disservice to ourselves, most of all. Because, and we all know the airline story, right? Put your mask on yourself first and then put it on somebody else. But in real life, every day, day to day, hour to hour, when the kids are going, no, 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 mommy, mommy, look under the door, mommy, mommy, I made this picture for you. You know, when they're in school or they're they've got needs, they come to us and we just stop and we do we put other people first. You know, we do it as parents, we do it as leaders in our communities, as you know, leaders in our families, and I think that has to stop. Because when we start owning our power and deserving, feeling that we deserve, you know, everything, all the goodness life has to offer and that we feel, um, that we feel worthy of it, then I think we can step into our power and shine our light. And in shining our light, we're able to help others shine theirs. And I know that's why we do what we do in the various ways that we do it. So I don't know, Claudette, what are your thoughts? I love what you shared, Tandy, and, and you're right. The way we raise our children is the gate to changing um, what is 
happening in, in continuing the journey of the women before us. Um, you know, part of what we do is we do what we do because what this is what we learned in our families of origin, right? Yeah. Right. We, we will repeat what we learn. The thing is that today we can do things differently. And, um, you know, I understand now, like, from what I learned in my personal experience as, as being a hairdresser and, and being, you know, the, the, the differences I, I personally exper- experienced, I try to now see how I can make um, everybody more, at least on a more equal playing field. And I, I did this, and I try very hard to do this with my kids that are now adults and my grandkids that I both have uh, boys and girls. And you know, I, sometimes we hear things, like I would, I would hear things that I heard when I was growing up that today I'm thinking like, wow, that, that's not okay anymore. That, that's that's not acceptable in today's world. And I think that we need to voice it in a way that says, you know what, that was okay maybe back then, but I'm not going to accept it today. And I'm just going to stand up for what I believe in. So both of you shared about owning our power and, and being worthy. I think that one of the things that I see today and that we can share with our kids is to stand up for what they believe in and to have a voice to express it in a way that doesn't put another person down, but at least puts us all on the same playing field. Um, and one of the things I do is I work with supplements. And so if there's a place where there's a lot of inequality is women, and, the, and we're talking about women here, who are not seeing the value that we all bring. And so, you know, I think we need to see that we are all in this together, men and women, to make it better, not just for us today, but for future generations. And so the kids are seeing us, we are their role models. And so how we treat other people, how we treat our spouses at home, how we treat the person we work with, how we treat the person that we go shopping, the cashier, the, 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 the clerk, the, the, the waiter or the waitress. We're teaching our children how to behave and to uh, what it is that our values are, what the values you want to teach them. And so there's so much that we can um, help and do to make a difference and to include everybody. Yeah, absolutely. You know, there's, there's the quote that I put on, you know, on the website when we were inviting all of the people here to come and listen to us and to, you know, be part of this conversation is men are taught to apologize for their weaknesses and women for their strengths. And right. it, you know, and, yeah, you know, it's for far too long, our society has misappropriately, you know, confused sex with gender, and the and this is causing a hierarchy of in our in our society among the sexes, where you know where men are disciplined to present themselves as strong and stoic and quiet, where girls are to portray themselves as emotional, and because of all this association between emotion emotionless and strength and sensitivity and all of that you kind of like put our been put in the places of hierarchy among in the world and so I, I really think it would be valuable to you know as we speak about this and as we recognize it you know where have I showed up owning that not even intentionally but just owning that where have I showed up keeping my voice quiet or keeping myself invisible you know, as it turns out, not even planning for this day, I, um, mm-hmm. I chose to make my word for the year. I like to do that each New Year's. I chose to make it visibility. And um, because, you know, going through corporate world is one thing, and we are all coming from different places, of course. And then I personally ventured out into the entrepreneur world, and that's what I know Tandy's done too. 
And, you know, we all have ways that all of this shows up differently and at different times. And, and so I, I just know that I have felt like very powerful at some points of my life. And then other times kind of had this plain thing like, you know, am I really good enough? Can I really, you know, you see others do things and I don't know if I'm uh, sometimes comparing to men, sometimes comparing yes. to other women, but you know, but feeling like I had to be the superwoman, no one do it all when I was kind of starting over in a new venture and really didn't, but, but still felt like I was a smart woman, but you know, I would, but then, you know, okay, I would keep myself quiet because, you know, being a coach out there, you think, uh, or I thought I had to be perfect and an expert at everything and everything in my life had to be great and I had to be able to do it all and, you know, and so anyway, so all of that kind of just in the background is what's playing. And I think it's just all come from our history of just where we've been and what we've learned in our society. And so now here we are talking about it. And um, I, I think, you know, I wanted, there's two things. So I, I'll come back to this one thing in a moment. So it reminds me if we have time. I wanted to share something about um, what I read Chelsea Handler had shared about women supporting women because you know, we talk about raising our kids and all of that, but as, and that's awesome. And I, I a hundred percent agree with that. I also want to just speak of where I come from in my world right now. And that is, you know, supporting women, but also wanting to collaborate with women when, you know, we're kind of like taught a little bit in our society to compare and compete with each other. And so Although I can say that out loud that I don't want to do that, I catch myself sometimes feeling that. Um, and it's chipping away and it's better and better because here we are, some awesome women collaborating here together and we wanted to support that and be that. But I, I think that the way we've lived our life for a long time doesn't just like, oh, boom, I intellectually know better, so therefore I automatically do better, you know. But it affects us, you know, and so we learn a little bit as we go. So from that perspective, you know, is there any, you know, and I'll, I'll come back and share more too, but I was just wondering if there's, you know, some wisdom that we could share with other women out in the world that are not knowing how to show up or not knowing how to do it or feeling like, you know, invisible or not heard or, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I'd love I can't, I'd love to jump in here. I mean, especially when you work in the corporate world where it's male dominated, right? Male domination is about competition. I mean, it, so so whenever we enter a a, a male dominated environment, there's that testosterone. And um, Sheryl Sandberg shared this in her book Lean In. Which, if if none of you have read it, if you've not read it, you really, 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 really need to read it. I highly recommend it. The other person that I love is Deborah Tannen, who talks about men and women in communication, and I also highly recommend that because I think when we understand how the other gender. Um, functions, it allows us to give some room and not feel um, diminished or, or, or to feel invisible, but just say, hey, I understand that is your way of operating, but I would rather let we try something different. Do you mind? And so it's, it's communicating in the way that the other person understands. But definitely for people who are in email, dominated world there's this sense of competition now is it bad competition can be healthy as long as you don't start comparing yourself and thinking well I'm not as good as them because see what they're doing so I think competition isn't the thing that is as bad as the comparing that is where it brings us to want to hide or not lean in or to not speak up or stand up. So yeah, I just had to share that. <laughs> yeah, that's great, Claudette. And I love, um, Teresa, what you're talking about here, because it's very vulnerable, and it's very real. And I think women entrepreneurs like ourselves, I don't know of one entrepreneur 
who has not felt that? Not one. Not one. And if anybody says that they never, ever, ever, ever have felt the competitiveness or the, 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 um, the comparisons, they're lying. They're not being true to themselves because we do. <laughs> and it's unfortunate. But here's some, some ways that I like to, that I've used um, to help shift that mindset and that perspective because um, there's a couple different things. One is when we get stuck in comparing ourselves to others, other women or men, we are, we are dimming our light. We are, we are making ourselves small and we're not using our voice. And we sit in fear. In Elizabeth um, Gilbert's book, Big Magic, who, which is amazing, if none of you have read that, that's a great book recommendation too. She talks about how fear, it's a, the bottom line is fear. And it could be fear of success, fear of failure, fear of you know all kinds of things, comparison, a fear of criticism is one thing I want to talk about because I think is what, last year my word was visibility. And um, this year, my year is consistency. So, but last year, it was interesting because I really focused on visibility and I had some mindset gremlins come in and say to myself, ooh, Tandy, ooh, you really, do you really want to speak on international stages around the world and be like, you know, known whatever your definition of a big name is? Do you really want that? Because here's what's going to happen. You're going to get exhausted. Your, your, your health is going to deteriorate. It could, could deteriorate because you're going to be all over the place. You know, you're not going to be, um, have the, the sacred self-care on a daily basis that you have. If you're all over the place, flitting around all over, you're um, also going to open up the door for criticism and and um, I heard somebody, I think it was Lisa Nichols once said, you are not big until you have a whole website dedicated to hating you, you know? <laughs> and I think that's, it's kind of a funny thing. Yeah. But, um, but my point is that if we, when we can sit and own our, our voice and our worth, and know that the good that we're doing out in the world is much greater than the online bullies and the online people who will shame and try to hate and you know say bad things about us. It doesn't matter. That doesn't matter because what other people think of us is none of our business. So um, I think one of the limiting beliefs that a lot of women have about being out there you know, is, is that. Um, the other thing that I think is interesting is um, an interesting perspective is social media has really changed the game. And as women, you know, we'll go on and we'll look at, you know, each other's profiles and we'll see all the great, you know, we look at, at vacation pictures and yachts and, you know, all this stuff, right? But here's the thing, my friends, here's the thing. You are comparing your entire life to somebody else's highlights because how somebody presents themselves out in the world is, can, can be a very different thing than what's really going on. Somebody might show their mansion and all this, and I'm like, giving big lavish examples here, right? But, you know, all this stuff, but they might be married to their mortgage. They might be in the middle of foreclosure. They might be in the middle of divorcing. They might have had severe issues with, you know, their health, which leads so to a, avoid comparing your whole life to somebody else's highlights. And then the tip that I, that I love, and I use this all the time, and I use it with my kids when I catch them. Um, they're adults. They're 22, 25, and 29. And when I catch them, like getting down on themselves or like comparing themselves to their peers or what have you. I say, you don't know what the other person has gone through in life. 
and the struggles that they've had and the problems that they have. And problems are a good thing because it means we're alive, right? We're above the ground. But if you imagine the people that you're comparing yourself to all going in a circle and we all bundle up our problems and our issues and, and our experiences in life from birth to present, and we bundle them up in a little box and we throw them in the middle of the, of the floor and we're all walking around, we would probably pick up our own problems back rather than take yours or yours or yours. Because in the end, we've, at least from my perspective, when we honor and respect like um, what we've been through, you know, and our scars and our stretch marks and our, you know, all the stuff, right? That we honor, we're honoring that every step has gotten us to where we are today. And that when we can stay in our own lane and not compare ourselves to others and pick up their, uh, you know, their issues, um, we're able to just help more people, which is what we're here to do. So sorry, I went off on a tangent there, but I thought it was awesome important. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so, you know, I just, it it's all circles back around and all of it affects each other. And I just wanted to share a little bit about this um, article that I read from Chelsea Handler, and then maybe we can um, see where we can take it from there and check on the time or something. But um, she wrote an article and she, and she named it, like I said, we have a problem with women supporting women. And she does this, I think this came out around right after maybe the presidential election or something like that in the, in the United States. But so it's not really, I'm not meaning to focus on that, but that's just kind of the point she's coming from, but where she takes it. But let me just read a couple of excerpts of it. 94% um, of black women voted for Hillary Clinton because unlike white women, black women don't take their rights, liberties, or justice for granted. They honor how hard people fought for them and they are fully committed to honoring the very people who risked and in many cases lost their lives fighting for the ability to count. They understand how fragile our democracy is and they show up again and again because they know firsthand how fragile democracy and civilization are. And then she goes on to give statistics about how many voted and all that stuff. But where, where she's going with this is, um, even as the free country that we are, and even that we say that we want women's rights, when we had a woman run for president, how few of us, or only some of us, didn't show up for her, to support her. And so she wants to make, she's making a point here about ladies, we can do better than this. We can eliminate the competitiveness that has been imposed upon us because we are treated as a minority or they have been taught to tackle rather than decline. We can wake up America and American women to do a better job going forward and to create an activist fire under women to start treating other women out of respect. We need to rise up and use our votes to help ourselves and to stop hurting ourselves. So forget jealousy, forget competitiveness. We are stronger together. Find a woman that you, find a woman you have nothing in common with and give her a hug. Then hug yourself. Then roll up your sleeves and stop looking in the mirror and stop looking in the mirror. Look around, get away from yourself, find women to support and throw your weight behind them and get involved. We are better than this. We are better than what we've seen. We can get behind each other. And so that's where I would, that's where I, I feel that um, is super important part of it is for each woman, regardless of where she's come from, who she is, is really to kind of like take your own power back, you know, so I, you know, my, my coaching and, and programs are all about feminine power, which is really just about for women, focusing on women. That's where I feel like my strength is, where I have history of, you know, who I want to support and what I can really personally relate to. But it's really about just taking your power back. And so when you're feeling less than, or when you're feeling like you're in the job and you can't go for it because you don't have the education as him or them or they, or the experience, or that you won't be paid for what you want. Just step back and like, and ask, is that really true? And how can I change it for myself? Because the more that we keep embodying that belief, the more we're gonna keep carrying that belief forward. So really it's this movement 
is all of us together, but it's really individually showing up in our own belief system and how we choose to believe it for ourselves. And so there's external action and things to do, but in my opinion, the external may not get you where you want to go if you don't do the inner work first, because we can sit here all day long and say, this is what we need to do. But if we don't really look at my belief system and how I'm showing up and am I working on my own confidence and my building my own skills, what is it that I might be doing to self-sabotage myself? Do I have to believe them? No. What do I believe about myself? I feel like that's the foundation of who we are and that's what gives us our power. And so regardless of what's going on in the world, we show up differently when we embody differently and we're, we're leading in a different way based on those beliefs, not being a follower to what we've seen through history and, and being a conduit intentionally or not to keeping that going forward. And okay. I, love, I love what you shared, uh, Teresa. I think you know that a lot of what you said is about you know empowering ourselves, believing in our own ability to do what we need to do, right? And it starts with believing that you can do it. And um, sometimes we need um, some role models. And I understand, like, sometimes we don't want to be comparing, but it really helps when we can find in our world a few women that could actually show us what it looks like. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there are some examples. I... It, my my two exa well three examples is Mother Teresa like I, for me what she's done you know is she took something that was broken and she went and and helped these people when no one else wanted to do uh, Princess Diana is another one where for me it's like she's a positive role model so when I see these women and then Oprah is the other one and, and there's quite a few others, but those are the ones I think most often quoted. So for me, when I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm wondering, how can I do this? Like, I'm not good enough. Other people are better. And I look back at their story, at their beginning, not where they are now, but where they started from. And so, and, and their struggles, like none of them, it, it wasn't easy path, but you know they they made it, and they didn't make it on their own either. And I think that's important to remember. They surrounded themselves with friends and colleagues and other women who shared their their mission, their passion, their belief, and they lifted one another. And although we are talking about women and everything, I also want to make sure that we don't forget the men. If we leave the guys behind and just focus on the women, we're just creating a bigger um, uh, rift between the genders. So let's bring in the guys. Let's include the guys when we're talking about all these differences and where we need to move forward. They need to understand where we stand so that they can also support us and be the kind of partners, spouse, colleagues that we want them to be respecting us for who we are rather than just seeing us like a pretty face. Absolutely. We need to be raising our boys to be the men that will help bridge that gap, encourage and respect women always and in all ways, and yeah. be the kind of, of, of people that will help propel, you know, a, a loving, peaceful world moving forward. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And so, you know, maybe before we close, I wanted to, um, Maybe for our listeners, I mean, I'm sure that this is, conversation has helped them to reflect on some stories, some situations in their own life, but maybe even to just go forward a little bit more with it or to just look at others or those in their life. There's some questions that you could maybe ask or, or talk to others about. And for example, 
And yes, I totally agree about the men, but in honor of International Women's Day, the questions are just kind of post that direction, but certainly can um, look at both genders and any people. So how, how have women inspired you to pursue your goals? Who do you most admire as a role model, like Claudette was mentioning, in the workplace, in your life? How are women changing the way you think about work, life integration, about burnout and stress? Ariana Huffington comes to mind with her book, Thrive. Yes. I absolutely recommend that. Yes. Um, about leadership. You know, I, I like to talk about feminine leadership. It's a different type of showing up, too. Who have maybe um, changed your thoughts about that? about the traits of the feminine power, but other important issues that show up. Who are the most, who are the most important um, women in your life, including those that you've never met, that maybe inspired you? Can you recall a specific time when a woman or a supportive woman changed your life? And you know, there is, Somebody, one of you ladies mentioned Sheryl Sandberg and her book, Lean In. Claudette, you did. And I believe she had a, another book. I, I'm forgetting the name B, of it. B, Option, Option B. B. Yeah. After, it was about her husband after her husband passed away, yes. right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. So there was something that she said in there that I thought was quite lovely. And it was just kind of going on, you know, who do you recall a time that was your support system? And she has referring to her mother. And then she spoke about it in this, in this book. Um, but her, she, apparently when she was a young girl, her mother said, it is okay to talk about grief or pain. Oh, sorry, that's where she was referring to it. So what came about was she learned in the, in the workplace that it didn't always feel good to be emotional and talk about her grief or pain. And so that's where she's referring to that. But, but anyway, she said with her mother, well, I'm losing the quote here, I have it somewhere. Ah, well, it was, it was something like um, how her mother taught her to, hold on, hold on, hold on. Well, who? <laughs> Sorry, the second But it's I a great have. book. It's I mean, book, both I books are great. I say. But just, yeah. to, just to show that it's okay to be emotional and to be yourself and support others, that loving others and loving yourself is the best success of all. And so she was just making a point about that in the book. And I think that's where we really need to remember, as we were saying in all these different ways about not competing and comparing, allowing ourselves to be who we are, really are, and to be emotional and to be sensitive is a strength in itself as well. Absolutely. Yeah. So I think we're probably getting close to the time of closing, but you guys have shared so much great wisdom and resources and tips and things like that. But maybe, I, as I said at the beginning, if there's something that we would like to offer our listeners as a takeaway. And Tandy, do you want to share that first? Yeah, I, um, I think that there are, when I talk about self-love, because I talked about self-love during this call, and I think that the two keys to self-love really at a foundational level um, are two of the values that you talked about in the beginning. And that is forgiveness. That is the ability for us to feel our emotions and to forgive ourselves and to forgive others and gratitude. I think when we can sit and appreciate the little things, anything we strengthen that muscle we strengthen that love muscle and we can only choose one thing at a time we can only choose love or fear and that's uh something elizabeth magic talk elizabeth magic <laughs> elizabeth gilbert talks about big magic we can only choose love or fear a lot of people talk about this yeah which do you choose and I encourage everyone to take each moment. You know, we are Agape Stasinopoulos, who is actually the sister of Ariana Huffington, um, talked about in one of her, in her book, um, I forget what the name of it is right now, but she says, we're human beings, not human doings. Mm -hmm. And I think, I just want to bring it back to Teresa, what you said in the very beginning 
about intuition and about standing in your feminine power and how important that is for us to honor that and embrace it and integrate it and to spend more time being instead of doing. Did you have a free gift that you wanted to? Yes, I do. I um, invite you if you're, you know, interested in kicking overwhelm to the curb in, you know, uh, I have a never be overwhelmed again, quick start guide to inner peace and alignment. And you can grab that free gift um, at bit.ly slash or forward slash by overwhelm. So that's B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash B-Y-E O-V-E-R W-H-E-L-M bit.ly slash by overwhelm. And in that you're going to get, um, you know, some ways, specific ways to set boundaries. You're going to get my top 25 go-to affirmations and how to make them work because there's a secret sauce to making affirmations work for you. Um, and a few other surprises in there for you. So that's what I've got for them. Awesome. Thank you. Claudette. So um, some of the things I just want to share as we are wrapping up is that, you know, we all shared some great things. I love what you shared, Tandy and, and Teresa, especially in the beginning. Um, you know, one of the things I've seen, especially working with stepmoms and, and, and myself, is to stand up for what you believe in. You know, so many times we just say, oh, that's not important or someone else will do it. We, we, we have a tendency to minimize what we're doing or thinking or saying. So stand up. Stand up for what you believe in and share it. Voice it. Don't be afraid to express it. Oh, it's okay for you to stay and express it. It's it, don't don't hide. Don't don't hide behind someone else or hide behind an excuse or whatever. Own it, share it, express it, and be proud of what you do. And 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 don't be afraid to share that either. Be proud and stand up straight and, and share it. So, so that would be my thing to, to, to as I finish up, is to um, j just, just stand up for what you believe it and share it. Voice it, express it. Awesome. Okay, so as I... Oh, I do, oh, I do have something I'd like to offer. Okay, just, um, yeah. So um, for anybody who wants to um, um, check out who's a stepmom and, and feels that would like to have a little bit of support or a little bit of uh, inspiration, I have a free gift, and it's step, uh, www.stepmomcoach.com uh, forward slash free gift. And it's um, a book on words of hope, inspiration, and wisdom for stepmoms. So there's a lot of great quotes, a lot of great um, thinking tidbits that will really help you in, in moments that you're feeling, well, am I really doing that good of a job? Yes, you are. So it'll help you to stand up and, and feel valued. Thank you. Okay. Yes, yes, ma'am. So thank you. And, and I, you know, I, I think it would be wise. I'll put those links. Um, when below the video too, okay? So that'll be available to see those as well. And so, although I didn't find the other quotes that I was gonna share with you a minute ago, um, there was another one I wrote down and I did find it. So I just wanted to share it. Now, unfortunately, I don't know how to pronounce the woman's last name, but Malayla Yusavi, I believe yes. it's her name. Yeah. I raised my voice, not so I could shout, but so that those, those yeah. of us those without a voice can be heard. We cannot yes. succeed when half of us are held back. So that's yes. the big message here too, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know. Goosebumps. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I, I too, um, you know, I was, like I was saying before, you know, it, it's, I, I personally feel like there's so much of us to do, for us to do out in the world. And it seems to be more of this, 
sensing and feeling and pulling that we're that's happening to us as women and and to support ourselves in each other to do that and that is really my body of work that i do and i have been working on you know a, a program for a while that it's a monthly program that's you know i work with entrepreneurs and so many different women that are just trying to get themselves out in the world either it's just a, or you know or even just have the career they want or what the heck is my purpose and that they're always wanting to find out how to do more and so we kind of work through all that and we can get there but honestly the work that i kind of turn them around on when we first get started is let's work on ourselves first so anyway so i have something coming in the near future but it's not ready just quite yet to share that unfortunately but I would like to invite you if you haven't received from me in the past, if it's some, if you're new to listening here, is I do have a complimentary um, um, book you can download. It's Awaken Your Feminine Power, and it's about the seven secrets to being a confident, purposeful, purposeful and sensual woman. And that you can download that immediately, complimentary. You can go to my website at empowerthedream.com and there's a link at the very top to do that. And I'll include that link as well. And then that will put you, um, if you're open to receiving more information from you, then I can also share other things coming up just as the other ladies can do. But anyway, I really enjoyed this conversation. I really enjoyed coming yes. together and celebrating and talking about other awesome women out there and talking about what's been happening in our history and how we collectively yes. can support our big boys and little boys and our little girls and big girls and each other, you know, to move yeah. forward and to kind of co-create the environment in the world that we all can be with gender parity and human kindness and all of that going forward. So thank you so much Katie, for being here with me. I really love you and appreciate you doing this. Thank well, you. thank you everybody for listening to us as well. Thank, you so, thank you so much. It's been an honor to be part of this. And Teresa, thank you for uh, coordinating this and, and um, you know, um, having the vision and creating this uh, space for us to co-create. Awesome. You're welcome. Okay. And same with me. I really enjoyed this conversation and talk, having this conversation with both of you and, and sharing our, with our collective wisdom with other women around the world. <laughs> Right on. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, bye.